From the Rafters of Rupp is brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Don Franklin's Auto Mall, Double Dogs, Friends of Cole, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of From the Rafters of Rupp. I'm Kyle Macy. Some of Kentucky's greatest teams are honored in Rupp Arena with banners representing eight national championships and 17 Final Fours. There are 38 players, three coaches, one announcer, and one equipment manager who've also been honored by having their jerseys hang from the rafters of Rupp. So far, during our first three seasons, we've talked with many of these Kentucky greats to let them give you their own first-hand account of how they became Kentucky legends. We continue with today's episode featuring Darren Feldhaus. Darren wore the number 12 Kentucky jersey from the fall of 1987 to the spring of 1992. A 6'7", his physical strength on the inside made him one of Kentucky's all-time great rebounders and a soft touch from beyond the arc created a mismatch nightmare for Wildcat opponents. Darren's father, Alan Feldhaus Sr., played for the Big Blue in the early 1960s, which makes the Feldhaus duo one of only four father-son combinations to ever play at the University of Kentucky. We started our conversation discussing the role Darren's family played in shaping his sports career. Grew up in Maysville, Kentucky. Uh, came from a basketball family, definitely. Had two, my dad was my high school coach, and he also played here at the University of Kentucky. Uh, Two older brothers, uh, they both played college basketball. One played at Eastern, my oldest, Allen Jr., and then Willie played at Moorhead. They were five, six years older than me, so uh, growing up, they made it pretty tough on me and pretty much made me who I was. I was always pestering them and trying to keep up with them, and uh, I mean, <laughs> it didn't matter what we did. It, even sports not involved, it was there always had to be a winner. At that age, them being five and six years older than me, Seems like I was always on the losing end, but that definitely made me a much better athlete. My dad was a baseball coach at Mesa County also, and uh, he ran a peewee program of baseball in the summertime, and I can remember playing uh, t-ball for him at a very young age, and I remember him always saying there, uh, do not aim at somebody who usually hit the ball, because he didn't want me to hurt somebody when I was in it. <laughs> With Coach Allen Feldhaus Sr. on the bench and his sons Allen Jr. and Willie leading the on-court attack, Mason County earned the school's first trip to the Sweet 16 State Tournament in 1981. It kind of was a big deal for Mason County, first time being a state tournament, but the basketball program really meant a lot. And uh, from that point on till my senior year, that uh, basketball was the sport in Mason County. As a high school sophomore, it was Darren's time to shine. He made his first trip to Rupp Arena to play in the state tournament in 1985. The field house would hold, they said around 6,000 back then, and we would have to have a double session. That's how the basketball was so big there that we would play, I think it was like 4 o'clock or 4.30, get out of school a little bit early, and then come back and I think to clear the gym out and come back and play at 7.38. But it was, it was usually a packed house whenever the regional tournament rolled around. We did go on to win the region my sophomore year, but I was a 6'4", 6'5". I was more of a four-man, five-man at that time, even at, at, even at the sophomore age. So, but I did, uh, I made all term my sophomore year in the state tournament. Chris O'Hearn uh, was another guy that did. Uh, we actually upset the first game of the state term. We upset uh, Lexington Catholic, who was favored to win the state tournament that year. And then we got beat uh, on a, the next game. In Darren's senior year, the Royals made it back to the Sweet 16, but were ousted by the Ballard Bruins 64-62 in the quarterfinal rounds. Darren recalled how playing for his father throughout his high school career helped him to grow not only as a player, but as a person as well. My experience was great. I think uh, Dad really pushed us. I think he learned a lot. Him and Allen Jr., had, he had some hard times with Allen Jr. He probably would have gone back and done some things. He might have been a little bit harder on Allen Jr. Willie was a late mature, and he didn't have to really push him. I mean, Willie was, he's 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, he was a late and senior in high school, he's only 6'2", so there was not, 
much there, but yeah, I think he learned the white without on Junior made it a little bit easier on me, but he did push me. I think this the chewings and timeout probably was the worst. Uh, putting the finger in the chest a little bit, and you know, it, back then I think uh, getting this point across then, but never, never really just singled you out in practice or whatever. That's one thing about Dad as a coach. I loved his practice because they were not very long, but we might have been there iron 15 or iron half, but there was hardly very many breaks and we just went and got after it. We'll be right back with more of my conversation with Darren Feldhouse after these words from our sponsors. Hunter Brothers Pizza has been proudly serving communities across America for over 25 years. Download the Hunt Brothers Pizza app to find one of our 7,500 locations inside a convenience store near you. Are you a sporting shooter, hunter, or looking for the best concealed carry option? Bud's Gun Shop and Range is Kentucky's largest selection of firearms, ammunition, and firearm accessories. Located on Industry Road in Lexington. While at Mason County High School, Darren Feldhouse was selected to the first team All-State squad after both his junior and senior seasons. He was heavily recruited by every major college from across the country. I asked Darren what he remembered most about the recruiting process. Vanderbilt, Coach Newton recruited me as hard as anybody. I mean, he put a lot of time and effort. And Tennessee came on strong also because I, I got MVP of a camp, BC camp, or I don't know, five-star camp in uh, Northern Kentucky University, and they offered me late. But I remember the hard, one of the hardest phone calls I had to make when, when I committed to Kentucky early and I had to call CM. I mean, it's because we became really good buddies and friends and I had a really good recruiting visit down there and I thought I'd fit in there, but it was a lifelong dream to play at UK. Darren made his college choice prior to his senior basketball season. Certainly committing early can present a number of challenges. Darren described some of the reactions to his early signing and what ultimately sealed the deal in his choice to attend the University of Kentucky. Going on the road, especially in the basketball area of Mason County or going to Montgomery County or your big rivalries. And believe me, there was a lot of daddy's boys, water boys, going to sit the bench at UK because I'd already committed for my junior year. I had an in there. I was good friends with Sean. We played junior all-stars. He was on the team at that time. And, uh, but Coach Casey, Coach Casey, I, I, I felt that he probably recruited me the most of the, all the assistants. It, it, it did mean a lot. Uh, and that's just growing up, that's all we knew, we bled blue. And that's the only school I ever dreamed of playing. During his first year at UK, 1987 and 88, the decision was made for Darren to redshirt. The Cats finished that year 25-5 and five and lost in the NCAA tournament to Villanova in the round of 16. Darren explained to me how much he benefited and learned from the upperclassmen during that redshirt season. It was tough, but you know what? They were loaded that year. I, I really didn't know. I don't think I probably could have got much playing time that year with uh, Rex and Winston Bennett and Rob Block. It was a great experience for me, uh, knowing that there was not, not much pressure. You just go to practice every day, work hard, try to improve. Got to, got to wrestle with Winston Bennett pretty much every day in practice, or Richard Madison or somebody like that, who definitely made me a much better player. And going to the games and getting to cheer on the bench and I had a fun year because they were, a, they were a special group. The following year of 1988 and 89, the Kentucky basketball program faced a number of obstacles. While the NCAA deliberated the Chris Mills money package violation and the Eric Manuel ACT test score controversy, the Cats hobbled their way to a dismal 13 and 19 record. It was the first losing season at Kentucky in over 60 years. The problems surrounding the UK program led to the dismissal of head coach Eddie Sutton. It was in the paper and that's all people were talking about. And you know, I probably feel sorry for myself here. I get to come to University of Kentucky and hear all this is coming down on us. It was rough. It was just the everything about it. Uh, it was tough. We just heard names of, of who, what people might be coming in. I think PJ Carlissimo was one name that I remember. And, and then, of course, Coach Patino. On June 1st, 1989, Rick Patino was named the head basketball coach at the University of Kentucky. I asked Darren to share his first impressions of the new head coach from the East Coast. Scared to death. Honest, scared, scared to death, because he told us how, how much hard work it was going to be. And, but 
the same side of it was the fun style it was going to be too. And hearing him say with the players that he had there in front of him uh, that we were going to win, that's what we needed to hear. We will return with more of my conversation with Darren Feldhaus after these words from our sponsors. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, big on commitment. We never set out to be the largest auto dealer in Kentucky. He just set out to provide people reliable vehicles and great customer service. And for the last 50 years, that's what we've done. When he arrived at Kentucky, Rick Pitino had a history of success at the collegiate level and experience at the professional level. I discussed with Darren the legendary Patino preseason conditioning program, as well as the practice routine established by Coach Patino during his first season at UK. We were going to track twice a day. I do remember that. If you didn't make your times at 5.30 or whatever time it was in the morning before class, you would be going back at 3, 3.30 after class, and not too many of us made our times. Uh, I do know that going to classes, there was few days there were some players getting sick on the way to classes and you get to class feel like you can't hold the pen or pencil that's in your hand. Everything that we do is totally different from what we used to but so much fun especially on the offensive end. Uh, getting to shoot the threes, get the dri wants us to work on your ball handling. It was uh, it was fun. Winning at Kentucky came sooner than pundits predicted. Darren remembered the mental toughness necessary to fuel Kentucky's internal expectations to win. The style of play you played, Kyle, that's how we won a lot of ball games. We were just in better shape than they were. And we pressed, and the last five or 10 minutes, we won a lot, a lot of ball games because we wore them down. With Coach Patino, I know he was hard on us, but he was very positive with us. He, he gave you the confidence that you could get it done. He, I know he showed the hard side, but uh, he, he was behind you 100%. I think we surprised by a lot of people saying we win five games, we won 14, and only had eight players, but we were basketball players. We, we understood the game and we knew each other. I think people get caught up on what a person looks like or how, how they can jump, but I felt like that uh, we definitely were going to outwork anybody and we, uh, we were going to put it on the line every time we crossed the line. Before Darren's junior year, the Cats added high school parade All-American Jamal Mashburn to the roster. The addition moved Darren to the six-man role, a role he learned not only to accept, but to thrive in. Having Mash definitely changed, was a game changer that uh, things that he could do definitely made things different. I think I even got to know quickly because that's who I usually was matched up with in practice a lot. So uh, it, it came pretty easy to Mash. A lot of times, the way I looked at it, it didn't look like he was working hard, but he was. It just, that was the game speed of him. But the moves and the finesse that he had uh, inside, outside, uh, he definitely was special. After I got it, I kind of liked it, you know? Like you get to get in there and come fresh. Usually within three or four minutes, you're in the game. Uh, some of the, your opponents are a little tired, and it, uh, it got where no problem with it at all. I knew I was going to get the main thing Starting the game, I wanted to finish the game. Serving the last year of the NCAA probation, the Cats finished the regular season 22-6 and, and compiled the best record in the SEC. Darren averaged double figures with just under 11 points per game. Feldhouse shot over 52% from the field and led the team in three-point shooting accuracy, connecting on 39.1% of his three-point field goal attempts. With no postseason play available, Darren explained the laser focus the team shared during the entirety of the regular season. We were working for that last year, and with Coach Patino, it wasn't hard to stay motivated. Every game was important, and uh, that was the process of getting better. And uh, winning the SEC through the season or having the best record in the SEC, that was our season. In Darren's senior season, Kentucky regained their eligibility to participate in postseason play. As the SEC East regular season champs and SEC tournament champions, the Cats entered the NCAA tournament 26 and 6, ranked number 6 in the country, and earned a number 2 seed in the NCAA East Regional. Windsor Roll Dominion, Iowa State, and Massachusetts set up the much anticipated matchup against number 1 seed, top ranked, and overall tournament favorite, the Duke Blue Devils. 
Darren shared his memories of that historic Game for the Ages. Our same game plan, uh, same style, try to wear them down. And believe me, I, to this day, we believe we can win that game. And that's just the attitude we had. And that's, it always fed from Coach Patino. That's what he believed and he had got us to buy into that and uh, we, we were confident we could do it. Around the eight or 10 minute mark was when we cut it, you could see us making our run about that time when they were up and we, we see us making our run like we always do. And uh, from that point on, it was, it was on. It seemed like there was big shots made, big plays made. Uh, I know we got the press started to work on them. We got quite a few steals on quite a few easy baskets. And uh, it was uh, definitely just a knockout punches the whole way. During his last game in a Wildcat uniform, was considered by many to be one of the greatest college basketball games ever played. I was interested to hear Darren's thoughts about the shot that ended the game, and if memories of that game still cross his mind today, almost 30 years later. John and I were going to be back on, on Leitner, one behind, one in front. Can't really remember the whole details, but I think I do remember it. He stressed two or three times not to foul, and I think that uh, the biggest problem of the whole, the whole play we were not aggressive enough on the pass. That's where it should have been stopped. Hard to believe that you can go to the Final Four, chance to win a national championship, but uh, to go get beat that way is really tough. But we know we laid it on the line and uh, did everything we, we could. You know, it's, it's funny. Uh, my son plays basketball now, and I, we go around and play a lot of weekends in tournaments. He's at that age, it's not really, it's, it's his school team, but we was playing tournaments. And I have these kids come up that playing against Jake and they bring up Christian Leitner. I'm thinking, they don't know who Christian Leitner is. That's he's showing their age. But any time during NCAA tournament time, uh, believe me, I see that shot enough. Seems like commercials or the CBS, they show that shot all the time. So I get rode quite a bit about it. We will be right back with more of my conversation with Darren Feldhaus after these words from our sponsors. The coal industry's had a big impact on my life. My grandfather was a coal miner, my father was a coal miner. Coal is the largest driving force in our local economy. That's why I'm a friend of coal. Double Dogs is a great place to eat. In a single word, delicious. After the crushing NCAA tournament defeat in the East Regional Finals, Darren's UK career had come to an end. He quickly learned, however, that once a Wildcat, opportunities to give back to the Big Blue Nation are always available. Along with seniors Sean Woods, Richie Farmer, and John Pelfrey, Darren and some additional ex-Wildcats barnstormed through high school gyms in cities and towns all across the state of Kentucky, performing one last time in front of the greatest college basketball fans in the country. After our senior year, we we had a barnstorming tour, and uh, the 101 members were a big part of it. They pretty much got everything organized, and I think we had like 21 games pretty quick, with probably within a month. We would travel around and uh, play games, be pretty much sold out. Every one of them, uh, little high school gyms or whatever gyms would be sold out, and we would sign a lot of autographs, and we, it was, we had a lot of good times. Uh, it's just a different feel. Uh, Kentucky fans, when it comes to basketball, it's, uh, it's, uh, they're one of a kind. And, and they're, all, they're all pretty knowledgeable too. So they, they, they love their basketball. Darren followed an outstanding collegiate career at UK by signing a professional contract to play basketball overseas in Japan. I knew I was going to Japan. Uh, I'd already, I mean, pretty much that but in the middle of the year, that's probably where I would be going uh, after my, my senior year. It was totally different. Uh, the basketball, I would say, was not, it was more like work. Uh, a lot of fundamentals. I felt like I was past the fundamentals part of the game, and you go over there for seven months, and quite a few years I wouldn't play 20 games over there in seven months. So it was it was more like a job to me. I wouldn't say the basketball part was fun, but it, the Japanese people they it was it was a great experience, and they they treated me great. Darren returned to the states for good in 1999. His involvement with the family-run golf course expanded, and he soon took on the elevated role of managing operations at Kenton Station Golf Club in Maysville. It's just a family-owned nine-hole golf course. Uh, get a lot of play, have a lot of golf outings. I give uh, 
quite a few. I do golf clinics, give a few lessons to kids, which I really enjoy, um, and uh, run, run our leagues. Darren now spends time coaching and mentoring his son, Jake. Darren strives to foster that same love and respect of sports that was instilled in him by his parents and brothers as a child. Jake, he's fifth grade. Uh, he's a great kid, uh, so he, he does love the game of golf. He does really well in basketball. I probably push him there a little bit too much. Then I don't. I think that's probably his uh, least of the three. And uh, he probably has impressed me more at football. He plays quarterback, and he's 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 picked that up well. Hope to be sending some football uh, quarterback camps when he gets old enough. So uh, I want him to play at all. There's no doubt among Big Blue followers, Darren is remembered for his major role as a strong hard-nosed competitor of the Cats' unforgettable team. Darren recounted his connection to the UK fan base, his loyalty to the Kentucky program, and what it means to him to have his jersey retired and hanging in Rupp Arena. I, I like that name a lot, uh, unforgettable. So we, uh, what we went through uh, four or five years that we were here at University of Kentucky, that uh, the ups and downs, the sweat, and uh, all that we uh, put out there and the effort that we gave, and I, I think that's why we get the, that name. I remember uh, sitting there by John and looking up there and see it. We, we were definitely amazed. Uh, could, could not believe it, really. Uh, you know, I think it's more, of, it should be an unforgettable jersey than the four of us up there. <laughs> that's just the way I look at it. I don't look at myself as a uh, Kyle Macy or a Sam Bowie or a player like that. But you know what, I'm happy to see that felt house when I go in there. Every time I go in the rough, and it's not that often, I take my son a couple times a year, uh, I have to look up there and make sure it's still there. It's still, <laughs> it's still, it's still, it's just hard for me to believe. <laughs> Darren Felthaus enjoyed a spectacular basketball career. In 1987, he was named the Kentucky High School Gatorade Player of the Year while at Mason County. At the University of Kentucky, as a member of the Unforgettables, Darren forged his way into the prestigious 1,000-point club by scoring 1,232 career points. Honored for his character, discipline, and leadership, Darren was named team captain in both his junior and senior years. He followed his memorable time at UK with a successful pro career while playing overseas in Japan. In 2005, Darren was named to the University of Kentucky Hall of Fame. Darren fulfilled his childhood dream following in his father's footsteps and playing basketball for the University of Kentucky. The Darren Feldhouse number 12 jersey will forever hang in the rafters of Rupp as a testament to his hard work, his dedication, and his passion to succeed. And yes, big blue dreams really do come true. That will do it for season number three. Hope to see you back again next year for more from the rafters of Rupp. Thanks for joining us, everybody. From the rafters of Rupp was brought to you by Bud's Gun Shop, Don Franklin's Auto Mall, Double Dogs, Friends of Cole, Hunt Brothers Pizza, Kentucky Farm Bureau, and by Rafferty's.